Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. I'll ask. Uh, yeah. Jesus, I thank you for this day, Lord. Um, as we've been learning today about uh, receiving your guidance, I pray the Father God that we would uh, seek and um, pursue for your guidance, so Father God, for our lives, and that uh, we would be able to um, live a life that is according to your will, according to your plan, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything, and uh, I pray the Father God that we would uh, learn something today and that you would speak to us. In the name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Rin. Uh, are you all able to hear me clearly, uh, online students? Is there clarity? Because there was some problem last week in our class. Are you all able to hear me? Okay, thank you, Surya. Okay, so uh, good to see all of you. Welcome to class. Uh, can we see some nice smiles on your faces? <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, welcome, and um, we are in lesson 12, okay, of receiving God's guidance, uh, lesson 12. So we look at how God us, he guides us through his, what is the first thing that we looked at? God guides us through his, through his word, okay, then the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Then, the voice of the Holy Spirit, so it's the word of God, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit, then through the gifts of the Spirit, uh, to dreams and visions, through prophecies, uh, angels, godly counsel, thank you, and also through our minds, okay, our mind that is uh, renewed, okay. So today we're going to look at three more uh, times and seasons. Um, and how God orchestrates um, um, uh, situations in our life. And then, you know, we'll just look at uh, how we can just put all of this, what we learned together. So we just look at the last three chapters uh, in this book. Okay, so we're going to look. Look at is just through times and seasons and through. Conversation of his uh, services, uh, he about in our uh, lives. Okay, so we know that uh, God, when we when we studied uh, fulfilling God's purpose for our life, we we said that God works in. He has a plan. He's a God of order. He doesn't work arbitrary. He doesn't work randomly, but he has a plan and a purpose that he uh, unfolds uh, in the world and even in our lives. So he's a God of order, design, plan, uh, purpose. Okay, and uh, God actually works in Kronos moments, Kronos time, or Kairos moments, or Kairos time. Okay, Kronos, C H R O N O S, Kronos. So He works in Kronos moments, so Kronos time, on Kronos seasons, or He can, and He also works in Kairos time, K A I R O S. It's a Greek word. Kairos means the fullness of time, the right time the exact time when God will bring about all what he has planned and um, purpose. So there are two uh, times, uh, you know, zones that God works in, the Kronos and the Kairos, okay? So what is Kronos? Basically, Kronos is chronology, you know, chronology, right? Uh, how history works in order, in time. We, when we study history, we study it from creation down, okay? We study it from right from the beginning. Um, of you studying the history of uh, of uh, India, we look at the first king and then we come down to the other king. So chronology, okay? So God works in Kronos time, which means that you know there is a there's a time when God is. Uh, we are we're talking about Kronos time uh, in the framework of receiving God's guidance for our life. So um, you know there's a moment where God. Uh, will show you or reveal to you what is his plan and purpose for your life, okay? And then he will go about, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, preparing you, orchestrating the times and seasons so that you can plan, you can prepare, you can organize. So all that what happens is the Kronos time. From the time when God is revealing his plan and purpose for your life uh, to, you know, how he's um, uh, preparing you, to how he's guiding you, to how he's helping you organize, plan, execute what he wants you to do, all is in the Kronos time or the Kronos season. And then when you go through all of this, like, you know, your uh, your God is preparing you, you've organized things, you have planned things, he will bring you to the Kairos moment or the Kairos time. Kairos time is when God, you will see actually God bringing about all that he has planned and purpose or what he has spoken in your life. Do you understand that? So the Kronos time is when God is going to reveal to you what he wants to do in your life the plan and purposes then he will take you about planning you know preparing you for that uh, getting you ready for that and then he would help you to organize things plans things strategize things then when you all of that all of that is a chronos time the chronos season the chronos moments then you'll come to a place where you reach a kairos time or the kairos season when you will see god bringing into reality what he has spoken into your into your life or what he has planned and purpose for your life so for example if god says you know i i'm i'm going to make you um, an apostle or a pastor of a big church or i'm going to make you a worship leader or you know i'm going to make you an apostle or uh, you know somebody who's a missionary and god shows you which place he wants you to go as a missionary and then you know he reveals it and then he takes you to bible college and he take plan he prepares you he guides you and then you finally all of those are chronos moments chronos season okay then finally you come to a place where you're actually in the mission field or you are actually being the pastor of the big church that god has envisioned for your life or you are the worship pastor you become the worship pastor that is the kairos moment when you see what god has planned and purpose you see that in reality coming into fulfillment okay so I'll give you some examples from the word of god now for example in genesis chapter 3 we read that <clears throat> god says you know when he is uh, cursing the serpent he said he will put enmity between your seed and her seed and you see there are two words seed there in that in that uh, in that reference in genesis chapter 3 this uh, the first seed god says i will put enmity between your seed so that seed is a small s and between her seed which is a capital s so that is talking referring to the messiah who's going to come now before jesus actually came to the earth and the time when god uh, you know revealed this that you know the seed of the woman will crush the uh, head of the serpent so, uh, it took 4000 years from the time god revealed it to the time when jesus was born on the earth and he accomplish what God had planned and purpose. It took 4,000 years. So the 4,000 years are the Kronos season or the Kronos time. And when Jesus fulfilled it, you know, when he came, he fulfilled it on the cross. That is a Kairos season or the Kairos moment. Okay. So um, in the fullness of time, Kairos moment means in the fullness of time, in the right time, you know, God will bring about what he has planned and purpose. Another example is, you know, uh, God tells Abraham, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. And he says that for 400 years, your, your generation will be as slaves in an unknown land, but I will deliver them and I will bring them back to this land that I have promised. So it took, you know, so many years for God to do that but after the completion of 400 years we read in acts chapter 7 you know we see that you know uh, uh, god uh, says that you know uh, he raises up moses at the right time okay the kairos moment the fullness of time we read this in acts chapter 7 verses 17 and was uh, 20 that moses was born to deliver the people so the 400 years was the crown time and when Moses was born was the Kairos time, the fullness of time. The fullness of time when God is going to bring about what he had planned and he had um, purpose. So it's very important for us to know which season that we are in. 
Chronos time, Kairos time, which season, wh where, what is God doing? Even the Chronos time, what is he doing? He's revealed his plan to us. He, he's preparing us or he's telling us to execute the plan. What is he asking us to do? So it's very important for us to understand the times and seasons. And the Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, that we have to be like the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar, they understood the times and the seasons that uh, the Israel was going through. Okay, So we also need to be like the sons of Issachar, that we need to understand the times and seasons that God is um, taking us through. Okay, That is on, if you're following, it's on uh, in your books, page number 125. I don't know, in the PDF copy, um, anyone following the PDF copy? No, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we look at um, you know, page number 126 in your book, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses uh, 5 and 6. Okay, uh, in verse 6, can somebody read that, please? Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 6, what does it say? Yeah, so in for every matter, there is a time, and we need to judge the time we need to know we need to be wise to know you know what is the right time and the right way to do things okay now suppose god says i want you to do this this is your plan and purpose for your life you know i want you to be a worship leader i want you to be a missionary i want you to be a pastor you're going to be the pastor of a big church it doesn't mean that we're going to go looking out for a big church where we can apply to become a pastor or, you know, we straight away become a missionary or we straight away go to the mission field. No, you know, we need to know what is the right time God wants us to launch in and the right way. Okay. Now, for example, uh, you know, we can do things, um, uh, you know, we can do the right things, but in the wrong time. Okay. For for example, you can finish 10th standard and say, okay, finish 10th standard. I finished study. I want to get married. Is it the right time to get married? It's the right thing to do. I mean, you need to get married in life, but is this the right time to get married? No, why? Huh? You get a job first. Yes, what? Somebody was saying something here? Not the right age to marry or not mature. You don't have a job. You have to take care of your family. You can take care of yourself, the rent, the food, the, your wife, all her needs and everything. It's not the right time, okay? Uh, so it's sometimes, it, you know, you can be doing the wrong, you can do the right, uh, the right things at the wrong time. Okay, so you need to know when is the right time to do the right things. And when is the right time also to do the right things? When is the right, uh, when is the time to, to do the right things in the right order, in the right way? When is the right season to do the right things? Okay, otherwise we will get into uh, trouble. So even through life, you know, we need to seek God's guidance. Sometimes what we do is we just seek God's guidance to know what is his plan and purpose for our life. And then we say, okay, thank you, God, for revealing your plan and purpose for my life. You want me to become a teacher? You want me to become a chef? You want to become? You want me to become a housewife? You want me to become a pilot or engineer or doctor or a missionary? Thank you. And go about doing things our own way. But, you know, even in the course of doing plan for our life we need to know what god is telling us in which season okay what is the right thing to do in the right time the right season are you able to follow if you're not able to do the right thing the right season it will become a mystery for your life it will be a struggle in your um, life so we don't only look for what god wants us to do but we also should know what he wants us to do what he wants us to do and we also we need to prepare ourselves and wait for the right time when we launch out to do things. Now, for example, you're praying after your 12th standard and you ask God what he wants you to do. God says he wants you to become an engineer. Now, the next day you don't go to a, 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 a civil engineering firm or you don't go to an electrical uh, engineering uh, company or software engineering company and say, you know, God told me I have to be an engineer, so I'll start working as an engineer. You don't do that. What do you do? You have to join a college, you have to study, you have to work hard for years. If you want to do an MS, you do an MS after that. Uh, but you basically prepare yourself. After you get your uh, degree as an engineer, 
you just don't go and jump into any job, right? You look at the good possibilities. You know, you think, okay, I need to get myself trained into other things so that I can get a good job. So you, you, even in those areas of your life, you need to find out for God. Is God, is this the right time for me to get a job? Is the right time for me to do an MS, a master's, or a further course? Uh, what do you want to do? You want me to stay in India? You want me to go abroad? So you know, every step of the way, you need God's guidance. Are you able to understand? Okay. So you know, and God reveals to us in many different ways. So what are the different ways that God? Uh, reveals to us, guides us through His Word, through the inner voice of the Holy Spirit, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, um, to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, and all of these other ways that we have been uh, uh, looking at. Okay, so you know it's important that um, you know you go through that Kairos moments. For example, I gave you you know uh, if you want to become God says you're going to become a pastor of a big church or you're going to become a missionary. You just can't go the next day and, you know, uh, get into a church and say, you know, God has called me to become a pastor of a big church. It's a big church, Pastor uh, Ashish, and I have to become a pastor here. Okay. Pastor uh, will say, hey, do you have some theological degrees? Have you preached before? Do you have any experience? And you will say, no. So, you know, from the time when God you to do you, it's, it's a chronos move. You look for a good Bible college where you can study. You study to the Bible college. And then maybe, you know, God is saying, hey, this is not the right time for you to launch out. This is not the Kairos season. Okay, you're waiting after Bible college. I'm going to become a, a pastor of a big church. I'm going to become a worship leader. You're excited. You're waiting, you know, to finish that one year or two years or three years or four years of Bible college. And then after four years, you know, no opening is coming. You're wondering what God is doing. He's taking you to another church where you're working under another pastor. Or, you know, a senior pastor, and you say, hey, God has called me to be a senior pastor, and I'm working under a senior pastor. What am I doing here? See? Or you're saying, God has called me to be a worship leader, and I'm worship, uh, uh, you know, I'm uh, assistant to Pastor Roshan. Uh, what, what is God doing in my life? Is Did I hear right? Is, is, is God doing things right? But maybe God is saying, hey, before you become the worship leader, or become, you become the pastor of a big church, or going to, to become a missionary, I want you to be trained under another Master or another missionary, so you can learn things, so you can see and learn from this man of God or this woman of God. And then at the right time, and God knows you're prepared, you know, you've learned your lessons, you've seen things, you know, church administration, you know, the struggles, you know, the challenges, you have faced things, then God will to give you that big responsibility. Otherwise, if he straight away gives you that big responsibility, you will make a mess of it. It will become a burden for you. It will become a struggle for you. God knows that. And so he's actually training you. So he'll take you through all these Kairos, Kronos moments before he brings you into the Kairos moment for the fullness of time. But what do we need to do? We need to be patient. We need to understand times and seasons. We need to be obedient to what God is asking us to do okay so let's look at the life of jesus a few examples of how jesus you know walked in step and in time with the father we are on page number 129 <clears throat> okay page number 129 um so we can see how you know in several ways how jesus paid attention to the father's timing now we need to understand that jesus was not um you know he was not fully god he was fully man when he lived on the earth but he was able to discern the times and seasons which means it also shows us that you know we can also follow and understand the times and seasons god is taking us through okay so please look at your books in page number 129 um you know in john chapter 2 verse 4 and <clears throat> sorry when um, uh, when Jesus is, you know comes to him and says mary says you know um, there's no wine poor Miracle. What does Jesus say? My hour has not yet come. So he understood it was not his time to do, you know, to you, you know, to do what uh, Mary's asking him to do. Okay. In in John chapter seven, um, you know, Jesus' uh, uh, brothers are all going up to the Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast, feast, and they tell Jesus to, uh, also to come along with him. But what does Jesus say? My time has not yet come. A time has not come to go to Jerusalem. Okay. Another example uh, is in uh, when you know when Lazarus was very sick and Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus. Uh, they found out that he's very close to their village or their town. 
he sends word to them and what does jesus say he stayed there for two more days because he knew it was not the right time for him to go and heal lazarus he knew that there would be a kairos moment when he has to go you know and when people would be able to see the glory of god so he doesn't go right away and heal lazarus but we see later on the kairos moment the fullness of time the god appointed time he goes and he raises lazarus from the dead even on going to the cross in john chapter 12 verses 23 and 27 can somebody read that please Yeah. So what does Jesus say in verse 23? He says, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. So you see, he understood, okay, this is a time, now this Kairos moment when I'm going to be crucified, you know, I'm going to take on the sins of the whole world. He was able to discern the time, okay? Uh, John chapter 13, verse 1. Can John chapter 13, verse 1. Okay, so he also we see that Jesus knew that his hour has come. His hour has come for what? That he should leave this world and go. That means he has to be crucified on the cross and do what God has sent him to, what the Father has sent him to do, to die for the sins of the whole world. Okay, then we also see in John chapter 16, you know, um, Jesus tells uh, his disciples, you know, um, uh, I've told you all of these things. But when the time comes, you will remember what I have told you, okay? You may remember that I told you of them, and these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. So there are some things that Jesus did not reveal to them. There are some things he revealed to them because he knew it was the right time for them to know it. And also in John chapter 16, verse 25, Jesus says, I speak to you figuratively. That means I've spoken to you in parables, you know, and some things you could understand, some things you cannot understand. But there will be a time when, then, you know, you will not hear things from me in figurative language through parables. But, you know, uh, you will listen or hear plainly from the Father. You know, you will hear exactly, correctly, simply what you need to uh, do. Okay. So Jesus is also talking about the right moment when he revealed things to the people, when he had to say things he told them okay he also know that you know jesus knew the right time for his crucifixion and his uh, glorification in, in john chapter 16 verse 32 we are on page number 130 so if you're following with your book then you won't be sleepy or you won't dream so you can follow with me through your in your book uh, page number um, 130 we see in john chapter 16 jesus says indeed the hour is coming yes has now come okay when you will be scattered each to your own and will leave me alone. But he's, and he's saying that, you know, the time has come now when I'm going to be crucified and all of you are going to leave me and desert me. But who's going to be with me? Okay, my father is going to be with me. Okay. And on the cross, you know, Jesus knew that time for him uh, to go, you know, when he's, uh, he's going to, he's going to, he's you know the moment has come and he's lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said father the hour has come glorify your son that your son also may glorify you so through all of this we see that jesus also knew the time and season and he was he knew that was the cross time and was preparation time you know exactly at that time after 30 years jesus launched out into ministry he knew when he had to go where he had to go which miracle he had to do you know who he had to eat in, remember when he went to the pool of Bethesda, there were so many people but he knew exactly which whose time it was to receive their healing so he he worked himself or he followed the the chronos time and the chiron time so jesus was human he was free man and he was able to discern it and how was he able to discern it through the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. The same way we all
times. But how can we discern the times and seasons? You need to pray and ask God, God, uh, you know, show me the time and season I am in. You've given me what I need to do, but what are you trying to do in my life? What do I have to do? Okay, so you need to ask God, you know, God, is this the correct time and season for me to do this? Is this the correct time and season for me to do that? Uh, what do you want me to do in this season? Show me, guide me, lead me. And we need to wait upon God. And as he shows, we need to be obedient and follow. God works in times and seasons, the Kronos time and the Kairos time. And how we need to be like the sons of Issachar, uh, uh, who knew the times and seasons that Israel was going through. We also need to be like Jesus who knew the times and season that he was uh, going through. Okay, it's very important. If you don't know the time and season, you can mess up your life. You can find life boring. Uh, you'll be doing the wrong things at the wrong time. Uh, sometimes you'll be doing the wrong things at the right time and all of those things. So you need to pray and ask God to lead you and guide you. Okay, any questions? Any questions? yeah it's a good question uh you know um you know jesus knew that his hour had not come but you know when when he's talking about the hour has not yet come means he's talking about his whenever he refers to it is he's referring it to as a time when he's going to uh, take on the sins of the world Okay, so when he says my hour is not yet come, he's basically referring to he's not he's not the time when he's going to be the Messiah when he's going to take on the sins of the world. That's why we see that you know, irrespective of him saying that he goes on uh, to do the miracle because you know, he's talking about his hour has not come. He's basically referring uh, to the time has not come for him uh, to deliver his, to deliver people uh, or to die on the cross for that. Since. Good question. I anticipated that to come up. <laughs> yes, his brothers. Yes, still he goes secretly. Uh, yes, he goes. Even a uh, very good, uh, good question, good observation. You know, even in John chapter 7, and Jesus is. Um, uh, uh, Brothers tell him, come, let's go to the feast. Let's go up to Jerusalem. Okay, Jesus again tells them that, you know, my hour is not yet come. You go ahead. But then he secretly goes uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, he's not trying to be sly or anything, or he's not that he does not want to go with his brother. It's not yet time for him to go to Jerusalem, you know, to die on the cross, to be crucified. The hour is not yet come. So when he says the hour is not yet come, he's talking in, in the fullness of time, Iros moment. To fulfill what God has called him to do. Okay. But he understood the Kronos moment when he has to go and celebrate the feast, or when he has to go and preach or teach, or when he has to do the miracles, but it's not the Kairos moment. The time has not yet come. He's talking about the Kairos time. Why he went in secret was because he knew that you know uh, people were all out to kill him, to uh, to you know, capture him, uh, and he knew that it was not the time. If he had gone with his brothers, then you know, everybody would have known <clears throat> because sorry, his brothers told everyone, Hey, Jesus is here, Jesus is here, my brother is here, my brother is here, he's there, he's there, you know. Uh, so he goes, he says, My time has not yet come, but he goes secretly because he knows that the wants him to go to Jerusalem to do some things there. Um, but if he goes to this brother, it will become unnecessary publicity. <clears throat> See, and he can be captured. He can, uh, you know, which will hinder his the other work. So that's why he says, "My time has not come." So when he's saying, "My time has not yet come," he's talking about the Kairos moment, when the fullness of time has not come for me to do what the Father has asked me to do. Okay, good questions, good observations. Thank you for being alert. I knew these two questions were going to come up, and I was excited that it did. Thank you. OK, any other questions? <clears throat> no questions? OK, uh, if there's no questions, any questions from our online students?
Okay, online students are very quiet. Okay, we we'll move on to chapter 13. Um, the last uh, way that God guides us uh, to knowing his plan and purposes for our lives is when he orchestrates uh, situations, circumstances divinely. We already studied this in fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. This is one of the nine guideposts. Yes, the nine guideposts we fulfilling God's purpose for Yes, OK. Uh, so this is, um, you know, one of that that we already studied. So we'll just look at it, OK? Uh, we know that God orchestrates situations in our lives. Uh, can somebody read Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, please? Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. Yes, so you see what God uh, is saying here that, you know, he's, uh, his eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Okay, so, you know, we know that um, God is waiting uh, to reveal his plan and purpose for our lives, not to just show it and, you know, exit and leave and, you know, go and, you know, uh, you know, we need to figure out how to do it. No, God helps us each step of the way. He orchestrates situations, circumstances. He orchestrates people. He gives us favor. Uh, he gives us access to people. He opens the doors of opportunity. He, sh he shuts the uh, wrong doors. He opens the right doors that we need to um, step in, okay? And he will do things uh, like it says, you know, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived, you know, what the plans and purposes God has for you and what he can do for you. So we need to be excited about this because God is not just going to reveal his plan and purpose, but he's also journeying with us every step of the way and he's going to divinely bring about people, favor, contacts, you know, situations, take us to the right place, the right moment, uh, you know, uh, give us favor and access to people. Uh, show us, give us the ideas, the strategies, uh, you know, to fulfill what he has called us to uh, do. Look at what Job says in um, uh, Job chapter 42, verse um, 2. He says, I, I know that you can do everything. So Job is telling God, I know that you can do everything, and none of your purposes can be held. That means whatever God plan and purpose for our lives, you know, nothing can stop that from coming into uh, fruition. Nothing can come uh, stop us from doing or executing what God has uh, prepared for uh, us. Okay. So for example, you know, if you're praying um, uh, to, to God to ask and asking God to show you, you know, to direct you uh, what, you know, he wants you to do in um, life and then maybe you know God is saying okay it's the right time for you now uh, to get into a job okay so um, you know what do you do when you have to get a job you go and apply right you apply you see good positions you apply and then maybe you apply for the first place and then you you know the open there you you get an interview call you go for the interview uh, the the pay packages good the timings are good everything seems to be very good you love the place you love the environment this is what you're wanting to do so it just basically shows that god has orchestrated everything in your life he's just opened the right doors you stepped in and everything has just worked out uh, basically very very uh, well but maybe you need confirmation what is the confirmation you can you can how do you confirm if this is the place god wants you to work in You have to speak loud, dear. You have peace about it, okay? The inner witness, the Holy Spirit, uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit. What else? Through the word of God, okay? You can receive confirmation. Remember, I gave that example of that guy, how he had these two companies and how God showed him from God's word, okay? So these are uh, basically primary ways, main ways that we can, um, you know, you can see. But sometimes you go for the interview, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, you're not happy, you come back, and then you apply in other places. You can also wait on God to show you 
got, you know, there are so many places applied, so many places I went for interview, show me which is the, the right place. So you can, you know, God will show you to the word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of the Holy uh, Spirit. But sometimes it will just happen. You know, you're just trying the first time for the job. Everything just works out fine. Everything works out perfectly. You want to get into this uh, this this college, the school. You apply. You know, it's the best school. You get into it. It's basically God. You know, orchestrating situations on your behalf. It's not luck. It's not chance. It's not just your hard work that you did it, but it's God who's orchestrated everything. Is giving you a favor. He's brought everything to. Um, together, but sometimes you know we need to be mindful of uh, other factors that work in our life. Uh, sometimes not everything that God does is you know, that everything that happens in our life is not what God does. Okay, so you just can't sit back and say, "Okay, God is in control; He will take care." If it's God's will, it'll happen. If it's God's will, I'll get a job. If it's God's will, I'll go abroad and study. If it's God's will, I'll get into this college. No, we need to do our Part okay. When we need to do our part, there's sometimes in life situations that you know um, that you know things will come like a hindrance, and we also need to understand in the Chronos moments of life there will come hindrances, and those hindrances might not be necessarily from God. It can also be through Satan. Okay, so what uh, Satan can hinder the work of God, he can oppose the work of God, he can cause disturbances. You know, so what do we need to do? We just can't sit back and say, okay, if it's God's will, I get into that college. If it's not God's will, I not get into that workplace. I won't get that job. But what we need to do when we see hindrances, we need to be, you know, discerning. Okay, why is this happening? Okay, why is this pattern happening in my life? Maybe it's something that the devil is causing then you need to stand up and fight your battle you know uh, the word of god says the kingdom of god suffers violence and the violence take it by force sometimes god has some blessing for you but there is a hindrance from the evil one sometimes it can be even people who are a hindrance uh, sometimes it can be our own sin, our own uh, evil passions, our own evil desires. We need to discern that, and we need to take. You know, if it is uh, people, we need to discern that people are doing this. Uh, so be careful, avoid them. Ask God to remove them from your life. If it is something about your own life where it is about sin, then you know temptation. Uh, we ask God for forgiveness. If it is something that the, the devil is causing, then we need to step in. And you know, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We have to be violent in our spirit. We have to be warrior-like in our uh, spirit. We need to press in and take hold of what is ours. Okay, in every area of our life, whether it's uh, some sickness in your body, or if it's some, if it's poverty, or if it's. Uh, you know, some things that are happening to the generations, we step in, we take what is rightfully ours because God has given it to us, but sometimes it's a hindrance from the evil. And sometimes we need to speak to our storm to see it still. Sometimes we need to speak to our mountain to see it moved. You know, God cannot do that for us. God has given us the authority, He's given us everything we need for life and godliness, but we need to use the strategies that He has to give us. We just can't stand and say, Okay, you take everything from the devil, you live a hopeless life, you live a defeated life. Every door uh, uh, that God seems to open suddenly shuts. You say, okay, maybe it's not God's will. No, you need to fight and know why this is happening. Understand the times and um, seasons. Sometimes it can be our own wrong choices and we're facing the we're reaping the consequences for our own wrong choices or decisions that we make. We can't blame that on God or the devil or other people. We need to take... Uh, you know, uh, we need to take a, uh, uh, you know, uh, stand up for our own choices that we make, ask God for forgiveness, align our will to God's will, set things right, and then we can see those opened and we can see God working in our life. So sometimes when you see, you know, nothing is happening in your life, there's failure, there's, uh, you know, cycles of things that are happening continuously, then you know there's something wrong. You check what is going wrong, whether it's in your own life, or people causing it, or Satan, and then you take what is yours. Okay. How do you also know that um, you know uh, 
uh, if it is if it's God's will to do this at the right moment, this is the right time to do this. You know, um, uh, like we see in Judges chapter six. You know, God has chosen uh, Gideon as a as a judge. Okay, and he's and God is telling you, I want you to go and uh, deliver the people, the Midianites. Okay, and Gideon is very scared because he's not a warrior. Okay, he wants to make sure if God is really telling him to do what he's telling him to do. So, he's, uh, um, uh, he puts a, a, you know, a, a wool, piece of wool there, and he tells God, God, the next morning, you know, um, the, the wool should be soaked with water, not the dew that falls. Okay, it should be soaked with water. But the place surrounding it should be totally dry the next morning when he comes you know he sees he he squeezes that uh, wool and there's full water but the around the area is dry so he it's one way he's confirming that it is god's will for him to uh, lead israel into battle okay then he's still not very sure so he says god please excuse me one more time uh, this time let the ground around the wool be wet and let the wool be dry so the next day when he wakes up, the wool is dry and the place around it is wet. And it's a confirmation. Now, can we do this in our own lives when we want guidance from God? Can we place a, a wool or a blanket? Say, God, I'm going to place it outside my house in the night. You know, I, I will. If this is your will. If I should join this church, I should go here. I should go as a missionary. I Please like this. You can ask that good. You can ask for confirmation, but in the same manner. Why? You know, we need to understand in the Old Testament, you know, the Holy Spirit did not dwell in the people like it, the Holy Spirit dwells in a believer all the time. In in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon certain people. Certain plan and then the Holy Spirit left them after the plan was fulfilled. So the Holy Spirit will come upon a person when God gives them a plan or purpose to do. The Holy Spirit will empower them. When that is completed, the Holy Spirit will just leave them, will not live in them forever. Like, you know, we are privileged people as oh, New Testament uh, people. We have the Holy Spirit living in us, you know, always. The Holy Spirit does not leave us. In this context for Gideon, it was the right thing to do and also you know Gideon did not have the word of God right but is it the right thing for us to do in the new covenant in this season of life in in this point in the history no why because we have the word of God which is the primary way that God leads us is a confirmation we have the Holy Spirit we have the inner witness of the Holy Spirit we have the voice of the Holy Spirit we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, people can confirm it through prophecies uh, God can orchestrate situations so this is not a thing that we should be doing okay uh, the next one is about casting lots so can we cast lots and pick up like they picked up and found out that Jonah was the was a troublemaker. Uh, so when you want to find out who's a troublemaker in the hostel, you put lots and pick up the tit. <laughs> uh, do we do that? No, we don't do that, right? Um, but we see that you know um, after Jesus, um, uh, you know the apostles after Jesus' ascension, they wanted to know who would take Judas Iscariot's place, right? So what do they do? They put lots and it fell on Matthias. Okay. But, you know, this was not something that the apostles followed later on. This was before they, before the Pentecost, before they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They did this. So don't say because the apostles did this, we can also do it. But we need to remember this was before the because before they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. But look at what happens uh, after they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. We looked at these two incidents uh, uh, last week, last Friday, and also the previous week. Uh, in, in Acts chapter 13, when all of these apostles and ministers were praying and fasting, what does the Holy Spirit say? Separate for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work of the Lord. Did they put plots and pick up? 
No, it was the Holy Spirit who gave them. It might be to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the inner voice of the Holy Spirit, or the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. All of you following me? Okay. Acts chapter 15, we, we, I also mentioned this last week. You know, when uh, Paul goes to the council at Jerusalem, you know, they were all arguing whether the Gentiles you know, actually confirms it to all of them. That's why it says here, and it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. That means the Holy Spirit has confirmed it to all of them who was in the Jerusalem Council, okay? And also the people, the, the apostles and the leaders of the early church felt that, you know, they should not burden the Gentiles with the ritual of circumcision. Did they put lots? Did they say, okay, let's take a vote, all those for circumcision, hands up, all those not for circumcision for the Gentiles, hands down? No, they didn't do that. What? How do they make the decision based on what seemed good to the Holy Spirit and what, you know, uh, seemed good to them as well, okay? So we are not supposed to cast lots and also, you know, do these uh, to find out. If it's so not, but, you know, this is my Bible, I'm just opening the verse. Whichever verse your my eye falls on, you we don't do all of those things. And also we need to remember that every closed door is does not mean it's a no from God. Some closed doors, when we, you know, God wants us to do something, they can be a closed door, but some closed doors are, you know, is something that we need to forcefully knock and pursue and open it for our lives because it can be a hindrance from the evil one. For example, we read in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, what does it say? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Okay? So it doesn't mean that every closed door is you know, saying, hey, everywhere I'm going, every church I'm going, I want to become a worship leader, there's closed doors. That means I didn't hear right. God does not want me to be a worship leader. Let me go back and ask God. No. You know, uh, look at uh, the example of Mary and Joseph. Now, Mary, uh, uh, what was conceived of her, what she was carrying, the Son of God in a womb, was conceived through her to the Holy Spirit. And the angel reveals it to her, that it's the Son of God who's going to be born. But when they go to uh, Bethlehem, every inn is, door is shut. So Mary and Joseph could have wondered, is this really the Son of God? If this is the Son of God, that means God should have opened a five-star Accommodation for us, you know, you're right. Was it a name? You're something. Shed. Okay, they landed up in a cattle shed. So they must be in cattle shed, son of God, you know, Messiah of the world. He's supposed to be the king of the universe. So, you know, sometimes God, you know, closes the doors that he does not want us to, you know, enter in because he wants us to go to the right place, the right time where he's going to open the right doors. And it not might not be grand and significant. It might be something very small, but in small, humble beginnings, God can begin birth a great plan that will establish a great big plan in your life. All people in life who became big in life, uh, you know, did not start big. They all started from something very, very small. Okay. Uh, we know Reliance, right? Uh, Ambani's, you know, uh, uh, Anil Ambani's uh, father, Dhirubhai Ambani, before he became uh, a giant um, in, the, in the, the field of petrol, in, now they produce their own petrol and sell it. You know, they have uh, crores, uh, millions of dollars of, uh, you know, profit. Before that, you know, what he used to do, he used to, you know, when you go to your car or bike, he used to hold that thing and put petrol into your bike. That was how he started. He was not a petrol bunk owner also, a gas station owner, see? But he was just an ordinary worker putting petrol into your car or bike. One of the greatest, biggest uh, businessmen. So we see that, you know, God begins things with humble beginnings. So because things are not going the way we are thinking, it does not mean it's not God's plan and purpose for our life. We still have to pursue it. Okay. Okay. There are some questions here. We'll come back after the break. And um, 
and ask and answer those questions. So we'll go for our break and then we'll come back. Thank you, everyone.